And I'm not even going to go into the fact that MJ looks very similar to one of the writers of this game because she damn sure doesn't look like the other model. <laughs> So Marvel Spider-Man 2 came out a few months ago and this was the most anticipated game of 2023. Also the main reason a lot of people bought a PS5. And on top of that, a lot of people have been waiting for me to review this game. But I absolutely refused until I got the Platinum Trophy and beat on the hardest difficulty, blindfolded on Donkey Kong Bongo. So in this game, you play as Spider-Man, uh, Spider-Mans. Spider-Man and Black Spider-Man. Two Black Spider-Man. So in this game, you play as Peter Parker and Miles Morales as they are juggling back and forth between crime fighting and being regular man. And during this time, a vicious hunter named Craven is on the prowl looking to hunt the strongest creatures in New York. And as this is going down, Peter gets reunited with his best friend Harry Osborn, who was suffering from a genetic disease that was inherited from his mother. But Peter finds out that Harry's disease is cured. Somehow. Hello. Hello. So now the Spider-Man's goals are to take down Craven while juggling back and forth with their day-to-day -day activities. Now it is really hard to talk about this game without spoiling shit, but we all knew the symbiote was in this game. I won't go into details story-wise, but I am damn sure gonna talk about it. Now I'm actually going to do things differently and talk about the gameplay before the story. So the gameplay is exactly what you remember from the last Spider-Man game, except now you have a parry button and you also get some new abilities from Miles and Peter as well. But I don't give a fuck about none of that shit because man, were those symbiote powers something else. Not only are the powers extremely fun to use, but I love how every single attack has some weight to them. I love how the symbiote powers show just how much Peter holds back as regular Spider-Man because Peter does not hold his punches when he is in that black Air Force jumpsuit. For me, the symbiote powers were the highlight of the game and that was the first tree I maxed out in the game which was awkward when I got to the climax of the game. And this isn't much of a spoiler, but I do love the fact that Craven is kind of the one responsible for why Peter gets the symbiote in the first place. And that is my perfect segue into the man, the myth, the hunter. Craven. I have seen many iterations of Craven in the past and I honestly never really cared for him. I didn't hate him, I just didn't care about him. But I can honestly say that he is now in my top five Spider-Man villains because of this game. No iteration of Craven has beaten this one ever. Now I will say I kind of wish we had more screen time of him actually hunting some of these characters. It's not a gripe, I just wish that certain characters weren't killed off screen and everyone already knows that Venom is in this game but without spoiling anything he is without a doubt the best section of the game period. The inner child in me playing Ultimate Spider-Man came out when I got to his section. That is all I'm going to say. And the one thing that I didn't think was going to affect me as much as it did in this game was the music. Specifically the music scores for Harry Osborn and Kraven the Hunter. Something about these tracks just made the characters for me. I felt like I understood Kraven's character perfectly the moment I heard this score. But Harry's theme is my favorite track in the entire game because the music tells his entire story throughout the game perfectly. The music starts sounding very hopeful, like the start of a brand new day, but slowly changes into something more sinister the longer the track goes on. Almost like this hopeful tone is nothing more than a mask for the true sinister tone lurking underneath. That being said, I do have one story gripe and it does have to do with Peter. While I love Peter in the black suit and Yuri Lowenthal's performance was phenomenal in this game, we did not get that much Peter Parker in the black suit like I wanted. We got a lot of Spider-Man in the black suit and that was done perfectly. I have no complaints with that. But I can only think of one scene where Peter Parker is being influenced by the symbiote and that's kind of disappointing because they hyped it up like we were going to get some Bully Maguire level scenes, but we really didn't 
get anything like that. Now, I'm not saying we need some goofy ass dance sequence or anything. I just wanted the mental breakdown of Peter Parker, not just Spider-Man. That is the best part of the alien suit arc. And on top of that, before Peter even gets the symbiote, they made this man look so damn weak. I understand the writers did this to make Miles look strong, but there are ways of making one character look strong without making the other one look weak. I would have been fine with Miles surpassing Peter if I slowly got to witness that progression throughout the game. But from the moment the game starts, Miles is already more powerful than Peter. You can see it clear as day in the Sandman fight. Now that being said, when it comes to the open world of this game, the web slinging is still the best way to traverse in any game period. And the web wings were a perfect addition to this system. And I can say this with a smile on my face that the majority of the side missions in this game were really good. There were some that were obviously similar to those in the previous game, like the base missions. But for the most part, the majority of the side missions all felt unique and I really appreciated that. Especially after I made those complaints in Spider-Man Miles Morales. Though that being said, why the fuck did they bring back the MJ missions? You would think for how many people hated them in the previous game, Insomniac would have just scrapped them entirely. But instead, they took all that negative feedback and gave her a gun. Sure, that'll fix the problem. Listen, if you want to give Mary Jane something to do, I have no problem with that. But hear me out for a second, okay? <clears throat> Stop trying to make MJ fight crime! I would rather see her day-to-day -day work with J. Jonah Jameson than see her do this shit. We already had a mission like that in Peter's flashback and it was good! Why couldn't we do that with MJ? As a matter of fact, even Haley had a better mission than MJ. Because it wasn't focused on her fighting, it was focused on her art. The only good MJ mission was the one where we had to run away from Peter who was losing control of the symbiote. I'm not gonna lie, the MJ missions really felt like Insomniac Games was trying to appease that part of the feminist community so they could have something to prove that women can fight alongside the men. Listen, I'm not here to offend anyone, but shut up, bitch. This woman is taking out Craven's goons faster than the people with spider powers. I'm not looking for flaws. I'm looking for logic. And I'm not even going to go into the fact that MJ looks very similar to one of the writers of this game because she damn sure doesn't look like the other model. But with all that said, Marvel Spider-Man 2 gave us a great story, hard hitting gameplay and some fun ass side missions. Would I recommend people to buy a PS5 for this game? No, though I wouldn't recommend anyone to buy a console specifically for one game unless it's the Nintendo Switch. If you like the current library of games on the PS5, then I highly recommend you pick one up. And as someone who has owned a PS5 for over a year now, none of the PS5 games have disappointed me so far. Wait, was Force Spoken on PS5? Shit. So with all that said, my final verdict for Marvel Spider-Man 2 is the golden seal of approval.